Awesome. Thanks, Candice. Appreciate you organizing this as well as the Linux Foundation's effort these last few weeks to get things set up. Um, as Candice said, my name is Jay and I'm the head of product here at Highlight. Um, I personally have, uh, having having in my role at Highlight, we've wor I've worked with a lot of customers that have um, sort of been uh, or experienced the same challenges that we'll be talking about in today's webinar. Um, so I'm excited to kind of get started and 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 talk to that to talk to that point with all of you all. Um, before I get started, though, maybe I'll hand the mic to Vadim and Chris, my colleagues here, who will be taking the bulk of the conversation. And then I'll just go over the agenda and we'll kick things off. Um, over to Vadim. Hey, everyone. Uh, as Jay and Candice men mentioned, uh, my name is Vadim. I run the engineering team here, here at Highlight. And um, yeah, really excited to walk through a few AI-specific use cases for open telemetry and monitoring uh, different kinds of performance and other issues that we'll be discussing today. And hey, everyone. I'm Chris Schmitz. I'm a software engineer here at Highlight. And I've... Uh been able to work on some of the AI powered features for Highlight. So uh, been able to kind of dog food, open telemetry, Highlight, uh, and some of the things we're talking about today um, through, through that. So yeah, excited to, to dig into all of it with you. Cool. Um, so yeah, in terms of the agenda today, um, we are going to go over the following items at a high level. First of all, we're going to be talking about AI applications versus your traditional applications like web and mobile apps. Um, then we'll be going over instrumentation with your AI application and how that works with open telemetry, as well as open LLMetry, which we'll introduce in this um, presentation. Then we'll go through an actual case study of a um, application that is built for LLMs and inference and things like that, and how we would instrument it using those tools. Um, as And then we'll kind of finish things off with just advanced techniques um, in terms of going from zero to one is obviously relatively easy in terms of getting instru instrumented and things like that. But um, how do you kind of build a team and build a culture around measuring your AI applications long-term? Um, and then lastly, uh, Maybe before we get started, and I'll also po uh, point at this towards the end, um, I do want to mention that all of the uh, ingestion and visualization of this data can be done in Highlight, which is an open source um, application monitoring tool where you can find it at highlight.io highlight.io or our GitHub um, repo at github.com slash highlight. And that makes it easy for you to kind of visualize this data um, on your application, though at the same time, it, no, no pressure in terms of using that specifically. There are other tools out there, which we'll also talk to a little bit. Um, so with that, I will move the mic over to Chris. Chris. Uh, thanks, Jay. And thanks, everyone, for being here for the most important event going on today. I can't really think of anything else happening that might be more important than this. Yeah. I'm sure there's a... <laughs> hopefully... Um, <laughs> Yeah, thanks for being here. Um, I know there's a lot going on with the election and everything today. So, um, yeah, we're obviously going to talk about the specifics of AI applications here and monitoring AI apps and optimizing them. But I think an important thing to to note here is that AI apps still are web and mobile apps. You know, there still is a client interface that your users are interacting with. You still have a backend, most likely before that's making might be making calls out to your LLM or an API call to, you know, an open AI backend or something like that. So there, all of the traditional observability tooling still needs to be in place for the basics of monitoring your application. And then Vadim will get into some of the details, um, but there's some, you know, some, some things that you can do with your existing observability stack specifically for AI apps. So, um, but yeah, I, I think the important things to, to think about with any application is, you know, you want to understand how your users are interacting with it. You want to understand performance bottlenecks. You want to, be, and you want to be able to find and fix errors quickly. So all of this is still very relevant today and all of the existing open telemetry tooling, um, kind of the baseline sort of open telemetry tooling and instrumentation is still very important even for AI applications. However, you know, AI apps do have some special considerations. You can go to the next slide. 
So AI apps, you know, with a with a traditional full stack web or mobile app, you know, the the inputs and outputs are very predictable. One of the challenges with with AI apps is we need to we need to have some observability around the quality of the output of our interactions with LLMs. We need to be tracking um, to make sure that things, you know, to protect users from odd behavior, incorrect uh, results, or, you know, hallucinations, inconsistencies with the, with the results. And we need a way to kind of objectively evaluate the, uh, the data coming back from these LLMs and um, one, I mean, there's just some, as kind of just a health measure to ensure our customers are having a good user experience. But two, we want to think about optimizing the outputs to continue improving the usefulness of our interactions with the LLMs over time. And in order to do that, you need to be measuring and you need to be have some objective score of, um, of quality over time as you're running experiments trying to improve the results. So luckily, you know, the, your existing, uh, observability stack, um, fits nicely with, you know, collecting all of this, it can kind of be uh, an enhancement to things like traces and, and logs and metrics that you're already sending today. So if we can jump to the next slide. So like I just mentioned, you know, we're, we're already hopefully have that baseline instrumentation and, um, you know, some of that observability data, collecting logs, traces, metrics from our application. But we need to we need to start collecting some of that LLM specific information, which is actually just going to be enhancements to our logs and traces and metrics. And that's where um, some new tools come into play. Luckily, a lot of them um, fit really nicely into the open telemetry ecosystem. So if you already use some of the instrumentation tooling or worked with a collector or things like that, um, you're going to feel right at home uh, extending some of that to start uh, collecting this LLM data. So, Vadim, I'll kick it over to you to dig in a little bit to open to open LLM tree. Of course, of course, uh, and thanks for thanks for covering all that, Chris. Um, so, open telemetry, as Chris mentioned, gives a, a good base for all of this observability data from your application. But AI applications require getting deeper into specific AI model invocations, inference calls, et cetera. So um, open telemetry provides a, a familiar interface for the instrumentation, but uh, we want open telemetry to be able to capture data deeper into the stack of AI apps. And so specifically open telemetry acts like an open telemetry auto instrumentation where you add it almost like a plugin to your open telemetry setup and it starts capturing automatic traces out of AI LLM calls and API calls to things like Hugging Face, OpenAI, et cetera. And we'll walk through a couple of examples of what that looks like, what that data looks like, and how to set it up. Uh, but what it in particular makes much more convenient is capturing structured data out of your AI calls where you can record data around how many tokens are being passed into your model or the response body itself, or the quality scores and latency of different invocations to different models. And you can even report custom attributes like evals where you use some sort of evaluation score on the response from a particular AI model to record that kind of data over time and understand, for instance, when you change a model or you tweak a prompt, how did your score change in production or in a particular development or staging environment with that particular change. So you can track it and, and understand it over time. Just a quick interruption um, to ask a question about what Vadim just said. Um, the question is, have you ever used open telemetry for AI monitoring or even open LLMetry? And I'll post this in the chat. I don't know if people can react to it, but if not, we could also use the Q and A if folks have like questions or particular thoughts. Yeah, I think I think it's just the Q and A, but feel free to to share any you know, questions or experiences with Open LLMetry in there. And while we wait for some responses, I'll I'll cover um, an example of data that's coming in from 
uh, an AI application instrumentation with OpenTelemetry. So the two, two steps of setting up your observability stack are first, setting up the code level instrumentation. So that's actually setting up the OpenTelemetry SDKs and then visualizing that data. So for the first part, setting up OpenTelemetry, if you're not familiar with OpenTelemetry, OpenTelemetry is a Linux Foundation project um, where they've implemented, there's a, there's a number of implementations from the open source community for commonly used languages and frameworks where spans and logs and metrics will automatically be emitted out of your application code via the auto instrumentations. And so the OpenTelemetry specification defines the data formats around all that, as well as ways to export and ingest that data. Um, all you need to do is in your application, set up the OpenTelemetry SDK for automatic export of data and the auto instrumentations for capturing spans around relevant code blocks. So once you have that data, you can start setting up additional instrumentations, whether your own manual span recording or additional auto instrumentations, such as OpenLLMetry, where OpenLLMetry, for instance, records spans for our individual AI model invocations, as we've discussed. And what you get is data that can be visualized like this image on the right. This is a waterfall view of a single trace where we see code incoming from a particular asynchronous worker and then being processed through different steps of your code pipeline. And those different steps take different amounts of time. So just at a glance with the right visualization tool, you can look at where is most of my code time being spent? What are the different steps if you're trying to debug or understand where an error might have happened? You see all that at a glance and you can understand for each of those steps what was going on in the particular uh, step. And we'll look at some of the structured data that's recorded on these spans uh, for, for how you would actually dig deeper here. But the nice thing about this kind of data and uh, the nice thing about having a powerful visualization tool is you can then aggregate and report on that data in a, a myriad different ways. So for instance, you can aggregate the latency by the type of span or by the type of operation. You can sum up your token counts to understand your overall open AI usage. You can look at latency by different models, et cetera. So once you have all that data, OpenTelemetry and OpenLLMetry provide all that data for you. And it's just a question of how do you slice and dice it? So what does it actually look like to set up OpenTelemetry in your code? Let's take a look at the Node.js OpenTelemetry example. This is taken from the uh, OpenTelemetry project website. So we're actually looking at the SDK setup here where we pull up the NPM packages that are necessary, set up the OpenTelemetry node SDK, set up export of traces to a particular destination, and set up the auto instrumentations. So really the key part here is this auto instrumentation setup where libraries that you use, such as Redis, such as Postgres, and with OpenLLMetry, such as OpenAI and the Hugging Face API, all of those libraries will be auto instrumented as spans that can show up as we saw in that previous slide image. So things like your Redis cache lookup or your database write, those will all be individual spans that are recorded and it'll all happen seamlessly without you having to make more code changes other than this initial instrumentation setup. Now, the other important part here is configuring that trace export. So OpenTelemetry will set up all of this data to be captured, but it has to go somewhere and it has to go to some sort of data store and visualization layer. And the OpenTelemetry collector is one way to ingest and process that data to be stored somewhere. But that does take quite a bit of time to set up and configure. And uh, an example of an open telemetry provider that supports it as an ingest layer is Highlight. Obviously, we're a little bit biased coming from there. But um, well, that's an example of a destination that you can set up for your traces. And you can set up multiple destinations. But that's an example of where you would ship your traces to then visualize them and dig into them. So speaking of visualizing those traces, Let's walk through a, a case study here with an example application that we can actually talk about in a bit more concrete terms to dig into that data. 
So let's say we have a, a, a an example here of some data coming from an application. Uh, to make it a little bit more timely, it's actually going to be an election prediction service. So let's say there's some sort of API uh, like post slash prediction slash create. That's what we have here in the span at the top in green, where you have an API request to or or this uh, this API server that's handling those requests, and it's going to be doing a number of different steps in order to generate an election prediction. So there's a number of attributes that come into that. Then there's different processing steps that happen. And all of this needs to be recorded so that we can understand where were the slow points or for uh, this AI use case, what was the quality of the response that we were getting out of our AI model? What we're seeing in this trace is first, the predictions create route gets hit. So this is the individual HTTP request that's coming into our server. In this case, this could be the Express.js auto instrumentation that OpenTelemetry provides that records a span for that particular post request. From there, we might have another span for uh, a different MVC framework, model view controller framework, or other sorts of uh, rendering engines that happen under the hood. And from there, we have our individual code that's executing different steps so for instance, here, we make an external API call to api.elections.gov, a made up API where we get some more information about the candidates. And then from there, we have some processing that creates a prompt for our hugging face model, which is running an AI model. Just for a bit of context, hugging face is an open source uh, model distribution channel. They also have a, a hosted inference uh, service where you can run those models in their compute engine and hit an API to get inference for a particular model. So this in this fictional example, we're sending some data to that API and getting a response. With OpenLLMetry, you'll automatically capture that outgoing request to Hugging Face and record a number of attributes for each of these spans. And in this case, the Hugging fan, the Face span has things like the score, the prompt size, the actual body of the response, the other metadata around the provider, the model, and things like latency around this particular request. So all of that gives us a lot to analyze going further to say, if I had thousands of these API requests over the course of an hour, what was their distribution? What were the different prompts that were used um, all of this just comes out of open LLMetry being set up with open telemetry and having a, some sort of data store for all of this. Um, again, in terms of the, the flame graph and this, uh, this visualization, it's useful to have all of this in one place because if you're just inserting it into a database, you have to, in your mind, stitch together what were the different steps that happened over time. But here at a glance, we can see um, a time series visualization where those different steps happen. For instance, we can see that there's a Postgres database insert right after that hugging face request. In this fictional example, it's because we're trying to record the prediction outcome in a Postgres database for future lookups. So you can you can quickly see what was going on in your setup and um, and aggregate that data too. So. Beyond just the auto instrumentation, there's quite a bit you can do with manual instrumentation with open telemetry and, and open LLMetry. So this is an example from some Ruby code where you can set up the open AI client and then create custom spans around different steps that you might be taking as part of the AI inference. So to trigger the inference, we are sending this client.chat request tell me a, a joke about open telemetry and we're using that request with open AI to get some sort of response, but we might want to report additional attributes such as the fact that this is part of the joke generator API call or the particular um, provider that we use, but there might be other attributes that you want to record. So open telemetry's APIs. And in this case, we're also using our own highlight SDK those make it easy for you to report additional metadata around that code execution on top of the auto instrumentation. 
So pretty much everything we've been covering so far has been the auto instrumentation, the automatic capture of spans with those library calls. But then there's also these manual attributes and spans that you can record to, uh, to track more information from your code that's executing. A nice visualization layer can then get you a lot more aggregation and visualization of the data that could be useful for different business questions or engineering problems that you're trying to solve. So for instance, with Highlight, if you're sending all of this AI observability data, you can visualize the token usage over time. You can see eval score trends over time to understand when a particular release changed a prompt and caused your eval score to degrade. Or you can see how load or model changes cause your latency to spike and increase. So there's quite a bit you can do when you have a good visualization tool on top of all of this data. And you need it to be flexible to these different kinds of use cases because this data is quite complex and different problems that you're trying to solve require different approaches to aggregating and analyzing that data. So at the same time, you need it to be tuned for the AI use case but you also need it to be customizable and give you control over how you're visualizing your, um, your open telemetry spans. One thing that's different about monitoring AI applications compared to monitoring web applications is that the AI model output is quite difficult to evaluate and monitor. And so the reason that's the case is the response itself from an AI model is text-based, or there might be other kinds of AI model outputs like embeddings or other numeric attributes, but typically it's hard to evaluate the performance because there's no benchmark to compare it against. Well, luckily there's a technique called eval scoring where you can use a secondary model to understand the performance of your primary model or you can define a test data set with expected outputs from your model that you can then use as a benchmark to score your model in production against. So there are some ways to do that, but it requires a deeper understanding of a particular problem that you're trying to solve and the particular AI use case, because it is quite custom depending on that. But in short, with open telemetry and general AI, any sort of AI observability, if you're emitting those scores as metrics and reporting them as traces, you can then aggregate and understand how that score is performing over time to detect a regression or an issue coming out of a particular change to your AI model. So in the evaluation use case, you can report open telemetry spans with additional attributes coming from your eval scoring system to then report that um, and set up an alert on top of that data. So, so you can get notified when your production score degrades, for instance. Uh, with open LLMetry, to be a little bit more specific, open LLMetry provides some scoring out of the box. So there's some factuality scores that come out of the open AI API requests, for instance. So that's a score that you get for free without having to do any additional work. But OpenAI also has a number of other techniques for using their own secondary evaluation model to score performance of like RAG workloads or other more complex systems. Um, so for instance, where this can come in really handy, if you're not familiar with RAG, that's the uh, aggregation of data for your prompt that's relevant to solving a particular question. So in our in our prediction election prediction example, we might be fetching documents or relevant candidate background history to get a sense of the prediction. To fetch all those documents, you need to use some sort of search algorithm, such as an embedding search algorithm, to get all of the relevant information to answer our actual prediction. And so all of those would be additional steps that you would want to record as spans before your actual prediction happens. And the prediction request to your other AI model would incorporate all of the data from that previous step into the prompt and into the context for the AI model. So all of that together 
um, would troubleshooting all of that in one go is quite difficult because you just get the final response. But having a robust observability setup in that kind of example will get you step by step what was going on in your code to produce the final output. And as your response may degrade, it would give you an explicit example of what were what was going on. So um, that's just a bit of an example here. In terms of best practices and how uh, you might further this going forward. So in the development use case, there's um, typically this notion of test data sets for AI models where you have some sort of known set of prompts and a human uh, will curate the optimal response for those. So there are further improvements that you can make by, by using AI observability to then build your dev data set out of production data. So one instance with our examples and with open telemetry, it's convenient to record the entire prompt and response set on your traces so that you have access to that to build your test data set. Another best practice is to use auto instrumentation when it's possible using libraries like OpenLLMetry rather than implementing your own manual tracing in different places. Because auto instrumentation can be flexible to different invocations in your code. And when you add a new open AI call, you don't want to have to be creating a custom span manually. You want to have some sort of auto instrumentation magically pick it up and start reporting it. So the more you use auto instrumentations, the better. And it's it would be better to implement your own auto instrumentation for a custom library rather than adding a bunch of manual tracing inside of the library itself. Um, and then with that example we just discussed with a RAG pipeline, segmenting your AI workload into different logical steps is always better from an observability perspective because you have data for those different steps that you can then aggregate and understand better. Because if you have everything happening as one span, there's not much you can dig into. You'd rather have it be granular and understand which step took the most time or understand the responses and the attributes for each step rather than seeing it as a whole. So that's just a few of these best practices here. And I think we have a question in the Q&A that I'd like to, to answer here. So does OpenTelemetry try to convert some logs into structured data towards some regular analysis? Question from Isaac. Um, thank you, that's a great question. So OpenTelemetry provides the ability to take data that comes in different formats and structure it so that it's ingested in a common structured data format for aggregation and for reporting and visualization. So let's say you have logs that are emitted to standard out by your Node.js application. Maybe they're coming out of Winston and let's say they're JSON structured logs. So you would set up an open telemetry agent, uh, the open telemetry collector that can read from standard out or read from a particular file and knows to parse those logs as JSON before converting them to the open telemetry log format and sending them over for ingestion. That's one example. Another example is if you have your application level instrumentation, well, once you install OpenTelemetry at the application level in Node.js, there's an auto instrumentation for console.log or there's a auto instrumentation for Winston and for Pino loggers where the SD, OpenTelemetry SDK will automatically structure the data out of the box without you having to do any additional steps because the open telemetry instrumentation understands that the logs are structured. And so again, OTEL defines the spec for structured logs and what that data looks like. But OTEL also can provide processors for parsing unstructured data into a structured format or semi or, or uh, JSON, for instance, which used to be structured, then got emitted as a string, reparsing that into the open telemetry specification so that it can be ingested. And at the end of the day, everything that is ingested will be 
open telemetry specification data, which is structured by de the definition. Thank you for that question. And um, just a reminder again, if there's any other questions on open telemetry or AI observability, keep them coming. Let's just talk a little bit more about Highlight in particular and how Highlight is a powerful visualization tool for different use cases. Just wanted to bring up that Highlight is an open source tool. So you can take a look at, as Jay mentioned earlier, github.com slash Highlight and look at our implementation of open telemetry ingest yourself, but also self host the stack or have a free trial on our cloud version where you can just start sending open telemetry data to it and visualizing it. The reason that you need a, a, a robust visualization tool for open telemetry data is the data can be very complex and very deeply structured. So you need some sort of tool to ingest that and get business or engineering insights out of because just having your logs or just having your traces isn't really actionable until you have a, a good tool to, uh, to understand all of that. So one of the things that you can do, you can dig into the individual logs and traces and metrics and highlight, but you can also correlate it to your front end session replays, which give you insights into user experience, or you can aggregate that data and visualize it in a time series graph. You can set up an alert with anomaly detection around things like for an AI application, your token usage or your eval score, but at the same time, be able to drill into a data point on a given day when your model started to perform poorly and look at individual prompts and responses from your AI model to see why did that score get so bad all of a sudden? Um, as we mentioned, you can aggregate and, and create time series graphs of all sorts of model metrics, of the engineering latency, of your um, different kinds of, of data that you're sending over. Um, and finally, you can even use it for support. So if you have some sort of ticket come in where a particular user was interacting with your API or was interacting with your site, and you had an issue, you're trying to understand what was the root cause, you have all that information in one place to dig into. So uh, again, a tool here is very powerful and, and very important to, to have a good visualization layer because you, you can have all this data coming from open telemetry, but unless you have something that can give you actionable insights out of that data in a production use case, it's not that useful to have it. But at the same time, once you set up open telemetry instrumentation once in your application level, you don't have to worry about what is, um, or that the engineering time that it takes to set up open telemetry is kind of a one-time cost that you pay to set up the SDK. And then it's easy to switch over or even send that data to multiple different backing stores. So you could try out highlight on the cloud version with the two week free trial and then switch over to a different open telemetry provider or roll your own solution using the open telemetry open source collector and write it to your own database, et cetera. So there's quite a bit of flexibility that you get with open telemetry. And um, yeah, highlight is just one of those, is, is, a, is a great way to, to get actionable insights out of all that data. One thing I'll add to that is that um, it also, the nice thing I think about something like highlight and there's other options out there is that you um, can actually, you don't have to self-host it. So you can get started very quickly, right? Like you can just have it a cloud hosted environment where you can send data to, where you don't have to deal with like managing it and things like that. I think a lot of the open source content allow there out there requires that you have your own expertise in DevOps and things like that. And so this sort of makes it very easy. Yeah, that's a really good point you're not locked into the cloud solution because you still can easily self-host. Open telemetry, you can always switch the vendor, but at the same time, it's much easier to get started with Highlight. Do we have any questions from, um, on, on I guess, on the content so far? If you all have a question, you can answer in the Q&A at the bottom.
I had it doesn't a, look uh, like we have any more questions at this time. Sounds good. Thanks, Candice. I had one question that I wanted to to ask here. Um, so we talked a lot about um, simpler tracing use cases where you have one application and you're trying to capture all that data. What about distributed systems where um, you have your API write a Kafka message that then gets picked up by some other worker and um, you have a different sequence of steps that can happen depending on that Kafka message. So how do you, with open telemetry, how can you achieve tracing of the code with something that's a distributed system? Do you guys have, that's a question to, to Chris or Jay. You know, is the answer like propagation? Like propagating the data across all the services so that we can piece things together? Yes. Thank you, Jay, for answering. Um, the open telemetry specification has this definition of context propagators, which allow you to define and, and automatically define certain ways to propagate the trace context between services. So for instance, with that Kafka example, depending on the library and depending on the language, it can be different, but there's auto propagators of the trace ID on the Kafka message so that as the message goes from one part of the processing to another, each of the code blocks that are processing the Kafka message emits spans and logs to the same trace so that everything is connected in a cohesive experience when you're trying to visualize it. And so even if your code is running across different nodes of your cluster or across even a, a variety of time when this message gets processed, everything can be reported to the same trace ID. Another example of a automatic propagator is the W3C propagator spec, um, which is a way to attach the trace ID to HTTP headers via trace parent and um, give additional propagation when you have HTTP calls to a subservice, et cetera. Cool. Um, well, it seems like we don't have many, many more questions, um, but maybe I will pass it over to Candice to kind of close things out. Thank you everyone for listening. Um, maybe before I do that though, um, as, as we mentioned a couple times, hopefully not too much, we do encourage you guys to take a look at Highlight when you get a chance. You can self-host it if you want to send all of your open LLMetry or open telemetry data, or you can use our cloud offering. Um, secondly, we make a lot of content on YouTube about open telemetry itself. So if you want to take a look at that, there's a link right here. Our uh, tag is at highlight-io. Um, and then lastly, and maybe most importantly, definitely check out the open... LLMetry and open telemetry docs to get started. Um, it's definitely a very good resource to kind of send that data over in the first place. Um, and then you can at that point decide what source you want to use to visualize things. Um, so yeah, with that, thank you again, everyone for taking a listen and, and, and hearing us out today. Um, and you can also just reach out to us. We're easy to find on Twitter and, um, email and things like that. I'm Jay at highlight.io, for example. Um, so yeah, with that, thank you again. We appreciate your time. And I'll uh, give the mic back to Candice. Thank you so much, Jay, Vadim, and Chris for your time today. And thank you everyone for joining us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. We hope you join us for future webinars. Have a wonderful day.